Hi everybody, my name is Natasha Butler and I am the lecturer for JCU's Social Surveys and Questionnaire Design subject, BX3181. And this is week two. And in this week's topic, we're talking about the problem, the problem definition and the research process. So thinking in terms of marketing problems is explained within the context of the first stage of the marketing research process, that is defining out the problem. The importance of developing clear research questions, hypothesis and objectives is emphasized. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the most important elements of our research. The amount of time researchers should set aside to define the problem is also considered in this topic. And if you're referring back to the text, you'll find that that concludes with a brief overview of research proposal content and the use of dummy tables, something you might want to consider for your research project assessment. So the learning outcomes for this particular topic is to discuss the nature of decision makers objectives and their role in defining the research problem. To understand that proper problem definition is essential in effective marketing research. To understand the importance of identifying key variables. Discuss how formulating research questions and hypotheses clarifies problem definition. Discuss the influence of testing the um, Oh, sorry, discuss the influence of stating the marketing problem on specific research objectives and explain the purposes of the research proposal. So a decision maker's degree of uncertainty influences decisions about the type of research that will be conducted. A marketing manager may be completely certain about the situation they're facing. However, at the other extreme, they may have no idea what's going on at all, or they may describe the decision-making situation as rather ambiguous, and that's where there's no clarity. The objectives are vague and the alternatives are really difficult to define. This is the most difficult decision situation, but most marketing decision situations will fall somewhere between these two extremes. And the problem that we find as, mar as a marketing consultant and as a marketing research consultant is that when market research do sit at the table, they usually don't say anything interesting. They often get lost in data and they fail to deliver concise and clear thinking, which is so important when we're thinking about marketing research. What's more, they often are disconnected with what the decision makers care about. And I think that's a really important point to note there is being clear on what our decision makers truly care about. Don't get caught up in the data, but keep focused on what it is that we're trying to solve for those decision makers. So marketing research is conducted to help solve managerial problems. So therefore, it is extremely important to define the marketing problem carefully because the definition will determine the purpose of the research and ultimately the research design. Formal qualitative research shouldn't begin until the problem has been clearly identified and clearly defined. However, when a problem or an opportunity is discovered, managers may have some vague insights about the complex situation. If the researchers conduct quantitative research before they understand exactly what's important, they may draw false conclusions from the investigation. So careful attention to problem definition allows the researcher to set the proper research objective. And problem definition indicates a specific marketing decision area that will be clarified by answering some research questions. Now, if little or no planning goes into that problem definition and research objectives, the data that's collected may have little to no value. The right answer to the wrong question may actually even be worthless or harmful. For example, Disney theme park in Hong Kong had a net loss. Well, why? So, you know, a couple of the reasons being was that it just wasn't popular with, Ch with Chinese tourists when it first opened in 2005, or maybe there was relative, uh, limited rides in a relatively small location. And there was no Disney Channel resulting in lack of emotional connection to the brand. So it's really important that we've asked the right question 
to begin with before we undertake our research. So the problem, the process of defining the problem is that we start with those six interrelated steps. And that is, we, work, we ascertain first of all, what the decision makers objectives are. What do they want to know? We need to understand the background of the problem, isolate and identify the problem, not the symptoms of the problem, determine the unit of analysis, determine then the relevant variables, and then state the research questions, hypotheses, and research ob objectives. And we're going to look into these in a little bit more detail now. So when it comes to ascertaining the decision makers objectives, the research investigation must attempt to satisfy the decision makers objectives. Sometimes decision makers aren't too good at being able to articulate precise research objectives because it's not their area of expertise. So for us as the um, research investigator or as the manager requesting this research, we need to try to have a clear understanding of the purpose of the research. So we need to ask them some questions to try to understand what's going on. Often exploratory research or illuminating the nature of the marketing opportunity or the problem can help the managers clarify their objectives and their decisions. And like many things, we use the iceberg principle here because the iceberg principle is a dangerous part of any marketing problem. Like the submerged part of the iceberg that isn't visible from the surface, this is something that's not visible or understood by the marketing managers. And if the submerged portions of the problem are omitted from that problem definition and subsequently from the research design, then the decision based on such research may be less than optimal. And you can see more about this. This uh, image is taken from Exhibit 2.2 in your textbook, and um, that goes into this uh, idea a little bit further. Now, the background, understanding the background of the problem is vital. And a situation analysis is the logical first step to define the problem. This analysis involves informal data gathering or ga uh, gathering background information to familiarize the researchers or the managers with the decision area. Because quite often, us as the researcher, we're not familiar with the topic or the background of the problem. So we need to do that exploratory research to start with. Exploratory research techniques have been developed to help formulate clear definitions of the problem. And we'll talk more about that in, um, in a few weeks time. But these include doing things such as literature reviews and conducting a situation analysis. Our pre preliminary research should start with existing company data, for example, sales records or customer complaints. We can then also look for information from experience surveys, customer feedback and case studies. The information that we find through, the, through marketing research is crucial to reduce uncertainty and to facilitate decision making. So we need to ensure that the background to the study is understood and also current studies published in the literature are reviewed. So when we're reviewing secondary research, there's four criteria that are really important in assessing the source of information. The first being, is it relevant? So it doesn't actually fit the research project needs. Secondly, is how accurate it is. Is it reliably collected and reported? Third, is it current? So is it sufficiently up to date for current decisions? I mean, we might find it an awesome article with some really great insights and information, but it was published back in 1962. Now, it's not overly current, but it may still be relevant and accurate. So we need to consider those things. And finally, is it impartial? Is, has it been objectively collected and reported? Oops. Nope, I'm in the right spot. So problems and symptoms can be confusing and they may only be symptoms of a deeper problem. So it's really important that we isolate and identify the problem, not the symptoms of the problem. Anticipating the many influences and dimensions of a problem is impossible for any researcher or, ex or an executive. Certain occurrences that appear to be the issue may only be symptoms of a deeper problem. Therefore, it's really important that we exercise judgment and creativity in identifying a problem. So three examples are provided in the um, table 2.1, which is taken from the textbook, um, which is rooting out the cause of problems requires asking why. 
So for example, as we can see there, our 20 year old swimming association in a major city is suffering or this one of the symptoms that we're seeing there is that membership's been declining for years and the new water park with a wave pool and uh, water slides moved into town a couple of years ago. Now that's the symptoms. Uh, but the problem definition that we based on the symptoms is that locals prefer the more ex expensive water park and have a good and, and have a negative image for the swimming pool. So if we're identifying the problem based on the symptom, that's the problem that we'd be looking at. Instead, the actual problem that we have is that there's been a demographic change. Children in this 20 year old local area have grown up and these residents no longer go swimming. So that could actually, that's actually our problem. Not that I know how that quite works, that uh, if we've got children in this 20 year old location have grown up and, but now that new water park with a wave pool and water slide seems to work better, but hey, I didn't write this. So, but it's just goes to show why it's important to be really clear that we are focusing on the true problem and not the symptoms of the problem when it comes to uh, identifying our research problem. The researcher must also specify the units of analysis. So will the individual consumer be the source of information or will it be the parent or the child dyad? Industries, organizations, departments, or individuals may be the focus for data collection and analysis. Many problems can be investigated at more than one level. For us, for our study that we're doing for our assessment, we're focusing on JCU staff and students in a certain age demographic. Now, one aspect of problem definition is identifying what those key variables are. And a variable is a quality that it can exhibit differences in value, usually magnitude or strength. A statistical analysis, a very, in a statistical analysis, a variable is identified um, by a symbol such as X, something that we don't know. A category or classification variable has a limited number of distinct variables. For example, sex will always be male or it will always be female. A continuous variable may encompass an infinite range of numbers, such as sales volume. Managers and researchers need to be really careful to include all relevant variables that must be studied in order to be able to answer the managerial problem. Irrelevant variables should not be included. In causal research, a dependent variable is a criterion or variable that is expected to be predictable or explained. But for us, we won't be doing causal uh, research in our particular study for your assessment. And then we have an independent variable and an independent variable is a variable that's expected to influence the dependent variable. And one of the ways that we can determine the different relevant variables is maybe using a fishbone diagram. And that's where we have at the start the dependent variable and then we start branching out on the ribs the different influencing um, independent variables that we have. So it just helps us be able to visualize it better. It's kind of like a mind map, but this one's called a fishbone diagram. And it's really quite handy. It's a handy way to sort of branch off on um, the different areas or different variables that we might have when it looks, when we're looking at our research problem. The research question when it comes to um, stating the research questions and the objectives. The research questions, the researcher's translation of the marketing problem into a specific need for inquiry. So we need to prepare a written statement that clarifies the ambu ambiguity about what the research hopes to achieve. The text example is about an advertising problem. And in its broadest sense, the marketing problem there is to determine the best way the company can continue can communicate with potential purchasers of a laptop computers. So certain um, research questions or objectives that we have is how familiar are consumers with the various brands of computers? What attitudes do consumers have towards these brands? How important are the various factors for evaluating the purchase of the laptop? Or how effective are the communication efforts of the various competitive marketers in terms of message rec recognition? So research questions make it easier to understand what is perplexing managers and to indicate what issues we're looking at solving or needing to be resolved. 
A research question should be specific, clear, and accompanied by a well-formulated hypothesis. Now, a hypothesis is an unproven proposition or a possible solution to a problem. In its simplest form, a hypothesis is a guess. But it does allow researchers to be clear about what they expect to find through the study and it provides information that will be useful in that decision making. Problems and hypotheses are similar. They both state relationships, but while problems are interrog interrogative, hypothesis uh, hypotheses are declarative and uh, declarative and more specifically related to the research operations and testing. Hypotheses are statements that can be empirically tested. In marketing research, we most often identify a problem rather than a hypothesis. For example, if consumers' attitudes towards a, pro a product change in a positive direction, consumption of that product will increase. When it comes to decision oriented when it comes to decision oriented research objectives the research objective is the researcher's version of the marketing problem now the research objective is derived from the problem definition and explains the purpose of the research in measurable terms as well as defining what standards the research should achieve such objectives help the research project uh, will help ensure that the research project is manageable in some instances, the marketing problems and the project's research objectives are actually identical. The objectives must specify the information needed to make a decision. So what information is needed for decision makers to make a decision? And the number of research objectives should be limited to a manageable number so that each one can be addressed fully. And Exhibit 2.4 from the text textbook shows how statements of the marketing problem influence that research objective. The specific objectives in turn are the basis for the research design. So for example, the, um, marketing, ma oh, the marketing management problem in the first instance is that should the retail uh, chain store offer in-home shopping via the internet? So then our research questions formulate around, are consumers aware of internet home shopping systems? And what are consumers' reactions to internet shopping? And then based on that though, oops, we've gone a bit, we've gone too far. Based on those overarching research questions, we can then manage our objectives. And our objectives are to, then they start with things such as to determine, to measure, to understand, to identify is where is the terms that we use when we're setting our research objectives. So here we are, our research objective is to determine consumer awareness with added recall and to measure consumer attitudes and beliefs about home shopping systems. So, it's, so that's is what we're going to do with an overarching research question is a question we want answered. And we'll go through that more in class as well. So how, long, how much time should be spent defining that problem? Well, the statement of marketing problem influences the research objectives, which becomes the basis for our research design. So it's absolutely impractical to search for every conceivable cause and minor influence of a problem. Therefore, the significance of a problem will usually indicate the amount of time and money needed to determine the most likely explanation. When it comes to the research proposal, the research proposal is a written statement of the research design. It explains the purpose of the study. It defines the problem. It outlines the research methodology and it details the procedures to be followed and states all the costs and the deadlines. The preparation of a research proposal forces the researcher to think critically about each stage of the process, which is your first assessment. The proposal should be precise, specific and concrete. All ambiguities about why and how the research will be conducted must be ironed out before the proposal is complete. The research proposal can act as a communications tool. It allows managers to evaluate proposed research design and determine if alterations are necessary. The proposal should be detailed enough that managers are clear about exactly how the information is going to be obtained. Uh, the proposal must communicate, mm, I think that I've just doubled, 
doubled up there. The proposal must communicate exactly what information will be obtained, where it will be obtained and how it will be obtained. For this reason, it also must be really explicit about sample selection, measurement, field work and so on. And we'll be talking and we'll go through now the proposal format that follows six, the six stages of the research process. So things we think about when defining the problem is what is the purpose of the study? How much do we already know? Is there any additional background information that's necessary? What's going to be measured and how are we going to measure it? And can the data be made available? And should research be calculated? When we come to selecting the basic research design, we think about what types of questions we need answered. Are descriptive or causal findings required? What is the source of the data? How quickly is this information needed? How should survey questions be worded? And how should experimental man manipulations be made? Then we get to the selection of the sample. So who or what is the source of the data? Can the target population be identified? Is a sample even necessary? And how accurate must that sample be? Is, it a pro is a probability sample necessary? Is a national sample necessary? How large a sample do we need? And how will that sample be selected? Then we move into the data gathering. And again, there's a whole load of questions there that we think about too, such as who is going to gather the data? How long it's going to take to gather this data? How much supervision is required? And what operational procedures need to be followed? We then undertake that data analysis and evaluation. So we'll stand, so we think about, will standardized editing and coding procedures be used? How are we going to categorize that data? Will computer or hand tabulation be used? I'd go for computer, definitely. What's the nature of the data? What questions do we need answered? How many variables are there to be investigated simultaneously? And what are the criteria for the evaluation of the performance? So then once we've done that data analysis and that evaluation, of course, then we move to actually producing our report. And there we think about who's our audience? Who's going to read the report? Have managerial recommendations been requested? How many presentations are, are required? Do we need to do it at different levels? And how will we format that written report? So we also need to consider the costs and the timing considerations. So how much is this study going to cost? Because of course, um, we've got that human element, that human resource cost, and we need to consider that. Is the time frame acceptable? You know, is 10 weeks okay? Or do we need it done in three weeks? Which, you know, that, that really impacts on how we undertake our data research. Do we need outside help such as data collectors? So will this, we also consider, will this research design attain the stated research uh, objectives? And also to when should the research begin? Then when we're thinking about the outcomes, we consider the potential results that we're expecting. And the anticipation of um, statistical findings is often lacking in research proposals. So researchers and managers can anticipate the outcomes or findings of a research study through the use of dummy tables. And these tables are filled with fictitious data in an attempt to help clarify what the findings of the research might be and if these findings will meet the desired objectives. So crew, Hope that didn't kill you. It wasn't a too long lecture this week. So let's just look at some of those key takeaways. So by now you should have a clear problem, should understand the clear problem identification will help ensure the right research direction is taken and the right answer is given to the right question. You've now got an idea that the problem definition can be difficult as most causes or true problems actually hide underneath some symptoms. The use of visuals such as the, bone, uh, the fishbone diagram can help clarify the nature of the problem that's going to be investigated. The, the research objective will influence the choice of the research designs and the corresponding methods to collect the, the data required. And the research proposal sets the agreement and expectations between the researcher and the client management. And you also need to be aware of the different stages involved.
Okay, well, that's it from me for this week. Um, but in next week's session, we will be looking at, at how we go about planning our research design. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts. So hit me up with some comments, any questions that you have, and we'll be talking about this further when it comes to class.